Hi everyone, and welcome to Easy Tutorial Vids. In this video, we will configure it in FL Studio. Now, just in case, you can always reset back to the default settings by following these instructions. I'll also put the link for this in the description. The first thing we'll do is to configure the sound settings. I've loaded one of FL Studio's demo projects found here to demonstrate the sound driver settings. To load this project, just right click and open. Or move and drop it on an empty space. It's possible that when you play a song, the sound starts glitching like this. This doesn't necessarily mean that you have to upgrade your system. There are a few things you could do to improve this. Let's go to the audio settings. First thing you could do is increase your buffer size until you don't have glitches like this. But Doing this will increase latency delaying playback time when playing on your keyboard or recording on your microphone. And you'll also see that graphic response gets slow. A better option is to switch to ACO drivers, which are a program to handle latency much faster and efficient for your CPU. You can do this by selecting a different driver from this list. This list shows all the audio drivers installed on your system. You'll probably have the ACO for all driver. If not, check the description link below to download and install it. If you have FL Studio 12 and above, you'll also get the FL Studio ACO driver. Now, if you have another music application or an external sound device installed like one of these, you'll also see those drivers in this list. In my case, Cubase and a Focus Scarlet device. Huh? Scarlet device. Oh. Which also has their own ACO drivers. Now, the downside of using ACO drivers is that you won't be able to hear sound from other programs on your system, like media players or browsers. Except for the FL Studio ACO drivers, which enables other programs to use the sound driver. So, if you want to follow a tutorial video, or watch YouTube while using FL Studio, you should use this driver. Let's select the ACO for all driver and open its settings. If this list is empty, close everything and reinstall the audio drivers. Now enable the driver you want to use or just enable advanced options and enable everything. Expand the list and turn everything else on. If you see red access, temporarily switch to a different sound device and close every other program that uses audio. The red access should be gone. If this refresh trick didn't work, just restart FL Studio again. The red access should now be gone. Now press play. If you don't hear anything, you'll have to change the audio output target on the mixer. Select the master track and keep changing the output target until you hear sound. You'll probably notice that the sound and graphics are much more responsive now. If you still hear crackles or glitches, move the slider to the right as indicated here. But if it sounds good, you could leave it as is. Or move the slider to the left to get even faster response times. This buffer size slider option is similar to other ACO drivers. Now keep in mind that this configuration depends on how heavy your project is. For now, I'll just use FL Studio's own ACO driver. Feel free to configure it to your own needs. I'll just leave it as is. To configure it autosave and add custom folders to the browser, go to the File tab. Here, you can tell FL Studio how you want to autosave or be reminded to save. We'll talk about managing plugins in a separate video. Here, 
you can add custom folders to FL Studio's browser by clicking on this folder icon and browsing to a folder or by just simply pasting the location here, which I mostly do. Here, you can change how the folders are named in FL Studio's browser. And as you can see, I also added a numeric prefix to dictate the order in which the folders are shown in the browser. FL Studio's browser also recognizes subfolder structures. So I really recommend you to take your time to organize these folders. Here's a few prefaces I like to change. Instead of switching the wait for input function on and off between listening and recording sessions, right click and enable only when recording. Now I can just leave it on. Sometimes you'll find yourself fiddling selecting plugins or MIDI outs while adjusting their parameters. That's because of FL Studio's default selection behavior. By default, FL Studio automatically closes the plugin that's not selected. In this case, to show multiple plugins, you'll first have to click here, then select the plugin. Now, in case you're fine tuning, let's say, the second instrument in contact, which is triggered by the MIDI out number two, it's still a problem. Because as soon as you tweak a parameter on the second instrument, FL Studio will switch the focus to the context VST, which only triggers the first loaded instrument. This means that you'll have to adjust the parameter, switch back to the second MIDI out to hear how it sounds, and keep switching back and forth. Not the ideal workflow, right? The workaround for this is to go into the general settings and turn off auto select linked modules. This changes FL Studio selection behavior. Now instead of automatically closing out plugins that are not selected, FL Studio leaves them open. Unless you click on it again in the channel rack. The other difference is that now FL Studio doesn't automatically focus your keys on the selected plugin. You'll have to do that manually. So now I don't have to switch back and forth between MIDI outs and VSDs. I'll just focus my keyboard on the second MIDI out and play the key while I'm fine tuning the instrument. There's one small detail to take in consideration. As you can see, I've linked some parameters to my keyboard's mod wheel. So, even though my keyboard still triggers MIDI out number two, its wheel knobs and faders will focus on what's selected. Now you may or may not want the selection behavior depending on your workflow. Just know that an option is there. In case you're wondering how to trigger separate libraries within multi-input VSDs like Contact and link their parameters to your keyboard, stay tuned for future videos where I'll show how to do just that. But first I'll show you how to set up your MIDI keyboard in the next video.